the United States. I, I kind of didn't come to the United States. I defected from Soviet Union and, uh, 20 years ago. And, and I'm getting too tired uh, of defecting, <laughs> to tell the truth. <laughs> to, to shop, <laughs> I think that... I think that it's, uh, it's about time to, to do it here, to do the, yes, to do what we can to, to protect our liberties, to, um, because it's, it's, an, it's a kind of, I would say, wholesale assault on, on human dignity, on human liberty, on our rights, on, on everything, unseen of, completely. And, uh, and the central planners in Washington, D.C. are not much better than central planners in, in Moscow. Um, and central planning wouldn't work again. And in Moscow, I mean, look, Soviet Union failed, uh, not because they didn't have enough planners, or they didn't go far enough, or they, they would not be persistent in what they're doing. No, they did all of the above. They murdered 60 million people, 60 million people to me. Because not also people, many people don't realize that the only way to make socialism work, at least temporarily, is mass murder. No other, no other tool. Because if you have a society in which, in which you don't have any incentives to do anything, look, healthcare will be taken off, you'll live in public housing, you will do whatever, and then, then what for to work? And so people don't work. Under, under socialism, the first symptom of socialism is, is that nobody is working. And then how to make people work? Only shoot them, shoot them, throw them to Siberia. Do something like that. So every socialist regime in human history ended up, ended up in mass, in mass murder. I was reading Lenin's letters, last letters they published in, in Russian in, in Moscow, which were classified until the Soviet Union collapsed. They were just published maybe seven, eight years ago. And in one of these letters, Lenin is writing to Dzerzhinsky, who was the founder of KGB, called Chekai at that time. He was a Polish uh, socialist. He is writing to him. He said, dear Felix, I'm telling comrades what to do, and they don't listen. So I'm thinking, what if we will take a couple of them and shoot them publicly? Their attention span would increase. And, <laughs> and they did. And attention, yes, attention was, <laughs> was almost perfect. And amazing, amazingly enough, if you will look at the history, economic history of the Soviet Union, the highest economic growth they achieved was when they were murdering most. In 1930, the Soviet Union became a superpower at the end of 1930s. At that time, they were murdering people 12,000 a day. 12,000 a day. It was a huge, huge meat grinder. It was a perfect killer state, perfect killer state. And then, and then I would say, however, that people are not perfect. And the people who endured all this, Russian people, then in the year 2000, they elected, in more or less free elections, a KGB colonel, a person who was, uh, who was working for the meat grinder. My last article in Russian, I published it on the internet, and then the Russian government shot it down, was, I had a self-descriptive title, Meat Voted for a Meat Grinder. <laughs> so that's the... It, it is, um, and sometimes it, it looks like people all around the world are so, so eager to give their liberty for some kind of a little handout or bailout or something like that. And this is, uh, this is very, it is, it is definitely very saddening because if you remember, Benjamin Franklin, he said those who would like to sell their liberty for a little bit of certainty would end up with no liberty, no certainty. And that's exactly it. Why people like socialism? Because it provides illusion of certainty. Illusion of certainty. It's not certainty, but illusion of certainty. And um, it's very, very, very sad to see the same kind of thing. And the same kind of people. Because um, <clears throat> I was in Washington the whole, the whole week and uh, was, didn't have much to do, was watching, watching our uh, brainwashing um, television. And uh, yes, and they, all these Democrats were saying, uh, look, uh, we, we are experiencing death threats, death threats. Uh, brother of some congressman even had his gas line to his grill cut. So we need, uh, we need to, to uh, right now, to, 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 to go after this. To, uh, and this would be whom? Republicans and probably libertarians, Tea Party people, 
other racists and whom not. This is just uh, completely unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, I was, it, the, the, how the slander is, the same kind of slander, the same kind of slander. If you, if you would look at the history of communist countries, you would see that dictators would acquire a lot of power when they would, when they would stage some kind of phony, um, phony attempts on their lives in whatever. That's what Stalin was doing all the time. He would say, well, I, was, uh, I nearly escaped uh, uh, being killed by, by another reactionary or, or conservative or whomever. And so then they would, they would stage it themselves, and then they would murder a lot of others. Well, not as far as, um, as, as, as Soviet Union was, but I'm afraid that we are on the way. On the way, because now, I mean, if you will look there, Homeland Security Secretary, Mrs. Napolitano, she, she believes that the major threat is not from any kind of terrorists from outside of the United States, it is from right-wing militias. That's the report, the report of the Homeland Security, that the major threat to our security is from us from us. Uh, tea parties are being painted right now as uh, racist and whatnot was, was just, just unbelievable.